My twin sister and I grew up in a small East Texas town. Um, my family was a normal family. Uh, my dad was an ex-war vet and he never went to college in a single day of his life, but he um, started his own cabinetry company. So some people say twins each favor after a parent, and um, my dad and I were really similar. We spent a lot of time together, um, even though my parents were in different cities, we would spend the weekends and the summers with him. And so he was just um, somebody that I could always talk to. And when I was 12, I was in the seventh grade, and I'll never forget that day, um, I was called into the principal's office. So I walked into the principal's office and I was greeted by really sad family members that just lined the office and um, everyone was there. I looked around, all my cousins, my sister, my brother, um, older sister, older brother, um, and my twin sister and I came in, and but my dad wasn't there. And so um, he had, earlier that day, had gone in for a routine heart exam and um, they injected some dye into his heart and didn't test if he was allergic to it. And so his heart failed um, in a matter of like seven minutes. Um, there was a lot of negligence involved in it. Um, the doctor didn't order the antidote in time. Um, the doctor wasn't around. And so just several things that really later on in life um, really put a bitter um, taste in all of our mouths. His death really played with my mind because my dad was my superhero. I knew a lot about God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. I think it's out of our desperation to know God that we often take, albeit broken images, but we take images of man and we put them onto God. and. It was just hard because I didn't have a father picture anymore and and so I felt like God was just this distance away because I didn't have a dad. So um, I just remember running away. I never got to the side farther than the side of my house. <laughs> but running away for a couple hours in into my backyard and just seeing if anyone even noticed if I was gone. And you know I sat out there for a long time and just tucked my tail between my legs and came back in and just sobbed on my floor and um, really met God um, at the end of me. And so I just remember telling him, man, I need you more than anything else I've ever needed. And you have to be that presence for me. You've got to be all for me. You have to be my father. He absolutely delivered. Um, I had an amazing um just high school experience, um, loved my church family, um, had an awesome college experience, was really involved in, um, man, I was a intern for our college group. So after college, I was really ready for life and uh, ready to make an impact in the world. And I moved into inner city Dallas and started teaching sixth grade science to a, in a Title I school and I taught refugees at night. I had a fight the first day in my room. I mean, it was a big wake-up call for a little bitty Southern girl. Um, met Daniel in that time, and we just had a really busy life. Um, we were just always go, 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 and in the middle of it, um, we, I really felt like God, we felt like God led me, and even a crux point in our relationship to go and move overseas. And so a lot of people are like, man, you guys have been dating for a year and you're going to move overseas? What is going on? Um, but it was during that time that God really used it. Um, just me being halfway across the world. Um, I lived in China for a year um, and taught English at a university in China and worked with the underground church at this university during the day. So three months after I got back from China, we got married. And Dana and I never planned to have kids so soon. We actually, you know, I come back with this single-minded, um, starting my career back in the U.S. of teaching at a university. 
And I was like full blown in that phase of life. Um, so fast forward another three months after getting married and we find out we're pregnant with our firstborn. And so life just quickly changed gears. Um, so we just really felt like parenthood came quickly for us. And for me, I wanted to be able to have my husband to myself for a while. And um, although we felt like we did things God's way, um, he absolutely surprised us and has such a sense of humor because he's continued to surprise us with kid after kid after kid. Um, just when I was catching my breath, I'd have another one. And so I don't say that, um, I, when I say that, I think of, I have a heavy heart for my friends that have struggled with infertility. But I do say that because I know that God has given each of us what we need, which is really to need Him. I think the hardest thing about being a mom is just living inside of four walls and being content. And, you know, I spent my whole singlehood like out and doing things and now I'm confined to really um, this space for most of the day with littles and um, to be content with that. So I'm grateful. Um, I know that <laughs> I'm such a work in progress and so I'm thankful for His grace. My name is Kristen Foster. I'm a tired mother of four and this is my story. <laughs>